Okay, so what we're going to study in this particular unit um, is polynomials, okay? So, guys, everybody up here, polynomials, they are very handy in studying economics, okay? So, we studied a couple polynomials, you know, a line is a polynomial, it's a linear polynomial, a quadratic is a polynomial, okay? But then what happens, you've got cubic, third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree, it gets a lot of complicated. Graphing them gets more complicated. So there's not really nice formulas like we had for quadratics, okay? But these are very good because they're useful for studying data, okay? So if I needed to study population or something like that, I can model that with a polynomial. You know, if I had a thousand data points, I could pick 500 different polynomials to model it on a computer. That's beyond the scope of the class, but we need tools for why we use polynomials and how we evaluate them, how we graph them. So, a polynomial is an algebraic expression. So, an, uh, an algebraic expression that can be written in this form. And don't let the all the little notation fool you. It's just a sub n, that's just a constant. And there's something x to the n, a to the n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, a1 to the x1, and a0. It's just basically saying I've got variables raised to integer powers, and I've got constants in front of them. So examples of polynomials. So here I've got it's a x, 1x to the 7th minus 1x to the 5th plus 1. So this is a polynomial. The largest exponent that I see is the degree of this polynomial. What is the degree of this polynomial? Yeah, this is a seventh degree polynomial. The other thing that happens with polynomials is we need to be able to identify the leading coefficient. So the degree and the leading coefficient. The degree is the largest exponent. The leading coefficient is the coefficient of the degree, excuse me, of the term with the highest degree. So in this particular case, what is the degree of this polynomial? Yeah. The degree of this polynomial is 3, okay? The leading coefficient, what is the coefficient of the term x to the third? Let's go with negative 4, okay? So this polynomial is degree 3 and it has a leading coefficient of negative 4, okay? Now the reason we're doing that is because that's going to have implications later when we go to graph it. These two pieces of information are critical third degree with a negative 4 coefficient, okay? So find the degree, that's the largest exponent. The coefficient in front of that is the leading coefficient, okay? The term that has no variable is our constant. So what is the constant in the next term? Yeah, the constant here is 3, okay? So polynomials come in many different ways. You know, so a monomial, I might have f of x is equal to 5x. That is a polynomial, mono, that prefix, prefix, prefix means what? One. It has one term. Okay, so this is a this is a polynomial. The degree is one. The leading coefficient is what? Five. And how many terms? How many terms in that polynomial? One term. Okay. A binomial. How many terms do you think that would have? Two. So if I had something like x squared minus four. Okay. That's a binomial, okay? What is the degree of that one? The degree is 2. What is the leading coefficient? 1, okay? What's the constant term? Minus 4, okay? What would a trinomial look like? Yeah, it has three terms, okay? One that we've been working with so far is something like this. 2x squared plus x minus 4. So we call it, that's a quadratic. But what is the degree of a quadratic? Yeah, the degree is 2. That's what a quadratic. What is the leading coefficient of that polynomial? 2. The constant is negative 4. The number of terms is 3. So that is a polynomial that is a trinomial. Okay? I could also have a trinomial that was like, you know, f of x equal x to the 7th. Excuse me. You x to the seventh minus x plus five. It doesn't have to be a quadratic to be a trinomial. It just has three terms. So both of these are trinomials. This one happens to be a quadratic. What's the degree of that one? Seven. Okay. So that's pretty straightforward, right? 
Let's do a few other examples. So, the first polynomial, what is the degree? 4. What is the leading coefficient? 67. How many terms? There are three terms. Okay. In the next one, what is the degree? 4. Leading coefficient? Yeah, negative 4, number of terms? 5. The next one, what is the degree? 2. Negative 1, 2. All right. What's the degree of the next one? Yeah, don't fall for, you know, don't get used to whatever the first one is being the degree. You know, the highest one is 7. What's the leading coefficient? The highest exponent. 9, and how many terms? 4. Okay. Now, let's look at... It's the it's the coefficient of the term with the highest exponent so it's the that goes with it, with the highest degree. Okay, I mean, so you can just look at it. That is your highest exponent. So the, the, your degree and your leading coefficient both come from that term. Okay. What if I had something like this? F of x equal x minus 1, x plus 2. What's the degree of that one? Yeah, you're tempted to say the degree is 1, but it's not because when you multiply this out, you're going to get x squared minus x plus 2x minus 2. This degree is 2. The leading coefficient is 1. Okay. One way that you can do this, if you had something like f of x equal 2x plus 1, 3x minus 1 times x. What's the degree of that one? What's the highest degree I'm going to have here? An x, right? What's the highest term I'm going to have here? An x and here. What happens when you multiply an x, an x, and an x? What will you get? x cubed. So this degree is 3, okay? What is the coefficient you'll get in this parentheses? What's the leading coefficient here? 2. Leading coefficient here? What happens when a 2, a 3, and a 1 are multiplied? Yeah, the leading coefficient is 6. Okay. Now, if you didn't believe that, you could multiply all these things out and get a big, long polynomial, and you would see that. Okay. We'll get more experience with that as we go on in this section. Okay. So let's look at a polynomial. Um, evaluating a polynomial by direct substitution. Okay. So here's a polynomial. Um, find f of x when x is negative, when x is positive two. So basically, I'm substituting what two in for x. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out what is f of two. So f of two is going to be everywhere I see an x, I replace it with two. So this is minus three, two cubed, plus two squared minus 12 times 2, minus 5. And you have to be careful. This now is no longer algebra. This is called what? Arithmetic. It's elementary, very elementary math. So this is what? Negative 3 times 8, plus 4, minus 24, minus 5. So this is negative 24 plus 4 minus 24 minus 5 so that's negative 48 negative 44 negative 49 did someone check me on that because i can make arithmetic mistakes with the best of them okay so that's just called direct substitution to find the value of a polynomial so that tells me when x is equal to 2 y is equal to When x is 2, y is equal to, if I'm graphing this, negative 49. When you plug in x equal 2, the y value you get back is negative 49. Was there a question? Um, there is another method 
for evaluating polynomials other than plugging this in. Okay, it's called synthetic substitution. We're going to be dealing with this a lot, so we'll we'll come back to it in a, in a few lessons here before your quiz. But it may seem a little, a little bit by magic, but let's just get used to what this is here. Um, so I'm trying to substitute f of two. So I write a two out here. Okay, what do these numbers here look like? They look like the coefficients of all the terms, right? So what's happening here is I'm going to work with it. Remember how in matrices, when we started out matrices many long years ago, matrices was a way to just deal with the numbers and let the x's and y's go away. Synthetic substitution is a way, let's just deal with those numbers instead of having to plug in values of x, okay? So what this corresponds to, this corresponds to my x cubed. This is my x squared. This is my x, and this is my constant, okay? So here's the way we do synthetic substitution, okay? First thing I do is I take that number and I just I pull it down to the bottom. So all I did, I took that negative 3, just copied it down to the bottom there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply these two numbers together. What happens when you multiply these two numbers together? You get a negative 6. I'm going to write that there. Now, I'm going to add these two numbers together. What happens when I add those numbers? Negative 5. Just a I'm just repeating this process. Now, what happens when I multiply these two numbers together? Okay. Now, what happens when I add those two numbers? Yeah, negative 22. Now, what happens when I multiply these two numbers? Negative 44. Now what happens when I add those numbers? Negative 49. Is that the same answer that I got a moment ago? Okay. Pardon me? Well, there's no... You, you just bring that number down, okay? And then I, do, then I start the process. Multiply here, put the number there, and add them. Multiply here, put the number there, and add them multiply here and then add them okay so this tells me that f of 2 is equal to negative 49 okay there are no exponents here this was basic this was basic multiply and add this was like really middle school math okay there was no no exponents to substitute in and raise to powers and worry about negative signs okay so synthetic substitution the way this works is if you're trying to evaluate f of 2 that's where the 2 goes. And then these are just all the coefficients. To, to start it out, bring that number all the way to the bottom, and then it's multiply, write the number, and then add. Multiply, get a number here, and add. Multiply, get the number here, and add. And that's what f of 2 is, negative 49. So let's do another example. Let's figure out f of negative 3 for this polynomial. Okay? So... Negative 3 goes outside here, okay? And now I have to write the coefficient. This is where people will get into trouble. You just have to really take your time. What is the degree of this polynomial? It's what? A third degree. So I'm going to have to have something that corresponds to an x cubed term. And here's the thing. You have to have a number that corresponds to everything. If this is a third degree polynomial, it has an x third, an x squared, an x, and a constant. You have to account for each of those spaces. What's the coefficient of the x cubed term? Negative 3. What's the coefficient of the x squared term? Yeah, see, there is no x squared term, so I have to account for that with a 0. What's the coefficient of x? Negative 12. And the constant? Negative 5. Okay, so what was the first step? What happens? Yeah, bring whatever this number is down. What's the next step? Multiply. What's negative 3 times negative 3? 9. What's the next step? Add those two numbers to get 9. What was the next thing? Multiply to get negative 27. And then I add to get what? What, negative 39? And then I multiply to get, um, what is it, 117? 
117 minus 5 is 112. Okay. So this tells me that f of negative 3 is equal to 112. Yes. Which one? Oh, evaluate this when x is negative 3. Okay. If I wanted to know when x was negative 4, how would this problem change? This would be where the negative 4 goes. Okay. How could I check and be sure I did the right thing here? Yeah, I could just, okay, let's just do it with direct substitution. That would be what? Negative 3 times negative 3 cubed minus 12 times negative 3 minus 5. So this is 27, um, negative 27. What's negative 27 times negative 3? I'm going to go with 81 plus 36 minus 5. So that's 117 minus 5. That is 112. So I get the same answer. Okay? Yes? You will probably be asked to do both ways. Okay. This will be, and again, this feels like a little, a little bit like, it feels like, oh my gosh, what is this? It will become second nature by the time we get to the quiz time because we'll be using this for many more things. Okay? So the biggest key is when you write this top row, Whatever your degree is, you have to account for every possible placeholder, okay? If this had been x cubed minus 5, so for example, if this is x cubed minus 5, I would have accounted for a 0 for x squared and a 0 for x. You have to put a 0 placeholder. That's the biggest mistake that people make. If you left this 0 out, you're going to get the wrong answer. Answer that doesn't make sense, okay? Multiplying two binomials by each other, okay? You may have learned FOIL to remind you how to do this. I try not to, to use the word FOIL because it only applies in this case when you've got two things multiplied by two things, okay? So when I have two things multiplied by two things, how many things will I get? Four, okay? So I like to think of it like this. Every term here is multiplied by every term here. So this 2x has to get multiplied by what? 3x and minus 2. This 4 has to get multiplied by 3x and minus 2. Okay? So it's very easy to have done the FOIL because you just do the first terms and you get what? 6x um, squared. The outside terms, minus 4x. The inside terms and the last terms. So those are four terms, right? And then what would I do? Yes, yeah, simplify. This is 6 squared plus 8x minus 8. Okay. So this one, you should be very familiar with this. Okay. The reason we don't use the FOIL acronym because it breaks down. What if that first parentheses had three terms in it? Then you can't FOIL. Okay. Then you have to figure out, okay, what's my method? But the FOILing really only works when you've got two things multiplied by two things. And I think you should be comfortable with, uh, with that. So let's move on to something like this. Two things multiplied by three things. How many things will I get? Six things. Okay, so what I have to happen here is the 4x has to multiply by everything in that second parentheses. The y has to multiply. So what some people will do, some people will do it like this. Let's just take the 4x. Multiply 4x by everything. And you've got 4x times 3x plus 4x times minus 7y plus 4x times 7. And then the y has to multiply by everything. So then you're going to have what? A y times 3x plus y times minus 7y plus y times 7. Okay. So I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different things there. So this becomes what? 12x squared minus 28xy plus 28x plus 3xy minus 7y squared plus 7y. Will any of those things combine? Yeah, this will combine with this, 
and then every else is going to stay the same. So this becomes what? 12x squared, what? Minus 25xy plus 28x minus 7y squared plus 7y. That's why we don't like to use the word foil because foil really broke down. You couldn't use that first inside, outside, last. It breaks down when you don't have two things multiplied by two things. Now, here's the way that I like to do this to sort of organize my thoughts. I'm trying to multiply 4x plus y times 3x minus 7y minus 7. Why do you think I wrote it like this? Yeah, this 4x needs to multiply by this, this, and this. Okay, so let's just do it this way. This is what, 12x squared? What's 4x times minus 7y? Yeah, minus 28xy. What is 4x times 7? 28x. Okay, let's go to the bottom row. What is y times 3x? That's 3xy. Y times negative 7Y, that's negative 7Y squared. Y times 7 is 7Y. Okay. And if there's anything that can combine, now you just look at it. What can combine? It looks like those, excuse me, these two things can combine. So it looks like this final answer should be 12X squared minus 25XY plus 28x minus 7y squared plus 7y. Is that the same thing that I got up above? Yes. So I just I flipped those terms, but that's fine. Okay. Pardon me? No, you will be you will draw it. Okay. So all you have to do is just make yourself a matrix like this or a chart. I like the reason I like this is when I'm doing this, it's like this times this, this times this, this times this. And see how this looks a whole lot uglier than this. Okay, this helps me organize, and it breaks it down into nine, or excuse me, six little problems. This times this, okay, that's 12x squared. Okay, now I move on to the next problem. So it breaks it down into six different problems, and then I can combine the like terms. So how would I multiply a trinomial times a trinomial? Yeah, so it's everything in this first, so everything here, this gets multiplied by all of that. This gets multiplied by all of that. This is where I just, to me, it helps me personally keep from making mistakes if I do this in a chart. Okay, so I've got x squared plus x minus 4, 2x squared minus 2x plus 3. Okay, if I draw it in a chart, then it becomes quite simple, okay? Now it breaks down to, I've got three things multiplied by three things. I will get how many things? Nine, okay? There are nine boxes here. What happens when x squared is multiplied by 2x squared? 2x to the fourth, okay? What happens when x squared is multiplied by negative 2x? Negative 2x cubed. What happens when x squared is multiplied by 3? 3x squared. Okay. What happens when x is multiplied by 2x squared? 2x cubed. x multiplied by negative 2x. Yeah, negative 2x squared. x multiplied by 3. 3x. Negative 4 times 2x squared. Yeah, negative 8x squared. Negative 4 times negative 2x. 8x. Negative 4 times 3, negative 12. Now, the other thing I like about organisms like this in a, in a grid is if there's anything that simplifies, it's all going to line up for me, okay? And likewise here. So now I'm going to have, what's my final answer? 2x to the fourth, okay? How many x cubes are there? What is 2x cubed minus 2x cubed? Zero. There are no x cubes. How many x squareds are there going to be? Yeah, it's negative 10 plus 3 is what? Negative 7. This is where your arithmetic needs to be solid. How many x's will there be? 11x 
minus 12 is what? Okay, so 2x to the 4th minus 7x squared plus 11x minus 12. Okay, so this is where I really prefer drawing a chart here to make this work. Okay, because like I said, it breaks down the nine multiplications that have to happen. They're broken down into nine little pieces. And then the way this chart is organized, if anything combines, it's going to be on this diagonal. So then that helps me. I, to me, that is easier to see than when it's all lined up like this. When things get all lined up on a big line like this, I find it harder to follow. Okay, I had kids that still preferred that. This is up to you. So that's just a way of making that happen. How would I multiply three binomials together? So there we go. Why don't I multiply the first two together, okay, and then do what? Then make a chart, okay? So if I do that, if I multiply these first two together, I get what? x squared plus 2x plus x plus 2 times x plus 3. So let's simplify. This is going to be what? x squared plus 3x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now I'm going to make a chart, okay? So this is going to be, so I've got x squared, 3x and 2, and then x and 3. Okay. What is x squared times x? Let's go with x cubed. What is x squared times 3? 3x squared. What is 3x times x? 3x squared. 3x times 3. That's 9x. 2 times x. And 2 times 3. And if you'll look, those two terms will combine, and these two terms will combine. So what's this final answer? x cubed, what? Plus 6x squared, yeah, plus 11x plus 6. Was there a question? The final answer was right, but a moment ago when I did 2 times 3, that's 6. So that's the number that you see right there, okay? Okay, there are some formulas that will help you. If you're averse to formulas, you don't have to have formulas. You can work all of these out, okay? A plus B times A minus B is A squared minus B squared, okay? But if you don't believe that, all you have to do is just write. So how do I follow this? What is A times A? This is A squared plus AB minus ab minus b squared what's ab minus ab zero yeah so this is a squared minus b squared okay so that's the formula so if you had x minus 2 x plus 2 that's x squared minus 4 okay that's just a simplification okay to square a binomial a plus b times a plus b this is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared like I said, if you don't want to waste your energy memorizing that, if you ever see that problem, A plus B times A plus B, when you FOIL that, you get A squared plus AB plus AB plus B squared. So that's A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. So that's all that formula is, okay? It could just be helpful when you see these things over and over. So this way, if I knew that x plus 2 squared, that's going to be x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay. Again, if you don't get that, write x plus 2 times x plus 2 and FOIL this and get the right answer. Please, whatever you do, this is not x squared plus 4. Okay. I think there's a meme that a puppy dies every time you do that. So you don't want, you don't want to contribute to that. So... This is x plus 2 times x plus 2. 
So you have to FOIL that. Um, the cube of a binomial. Okay. Again, this is one of those that if you want to put in the time to memorize this formula, it will save you time. Okay. If you don't memorize this formula, what do you have to do? You would have to work it out. So you would have to say, well, what is a plus b times a plus b times a plus b? How do we do that? Well, the first two, this is what x, this is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And then I will have to multiply that by a plus b. How do I do that? Let's pretend like your teacher taught you how to make a chart. Okay. A squared, 2ab, b squared, a and b. When you do this, you get a cubed. And then you get 2a squared b. And then you get a b squared. Looks like you get a squared b. And then 2ab squared and b cubed. So this turns into a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. That should be exactly what you see here. Okay. So these formulas can be helpful as just if you're cubing a binomial, it's the cube of this one plus 3 times the square of this times this plus 3 times the square of this times this, plus this one cubed, okay? It can just save you time if you've got that formula down, okay? So let's do some operations. This one's pretty straightforward. I don't really need a chart. You can use the FOIL method here. What happens when you multiply the first two terms? You have 25y squared. The outside terms, what, 15y minus 15y minus 9. So this is 25 y squared minus 9. Now what we could have used is the formula. This is in the form of a minus b times a plus b. And we know that's going to be a squared minus b squared. So I could go straight to my answer to say, oh, this is a minus b, a plus b. My answer is going to be 25 y squared minus 9. I could have gotten that straight without doing the FOIL and canceling those middle terms, okay? No harm done if you needed to do that. We're just saying that if you can recognize this as A minus B, A plus B, it's A squared minus B squared, you can get to an answer quicker, okay? Does everyone see what I'm doing there? Okay, and again, if you need to multiply this out, you're fine to do that. It's just these formulas can help. What about this one? 4A plus 7 squared, okay? This is in the form of a plus b squared, which is going to be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, so if I use that formula, it's going to be, okay, the square of the first term plus 2 times their product, okay, so that's going to be, what, 28, that's 56a plus the square of the last term. Okay. Now, if I didn't know that formula, I could just work this out. 4a plus 7 times 4a plus 7. When you multiply the first terms, what do you get? 16a squared plus 28a plus 28a plus 49. And I get back to this same answer. 16a squared plus 56a plus 49. Spencer? Are you okay? Okay. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer like memorizing a formula and going to your answer or do you prefer working it out? Working it out? Okay. Okay. The, the formula that will save you time is this one. Okay, cubing something. Okay. So, this is the form a minus b cubed, okay? 
I have a formula. This is a cubed minus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared minus b cubed. So in this formula, what is a? If I'm going to use this formula, what is a? Yeah, so I'm using this formula where a is equal to mn, and what is b? b is 6. So I've got a minus b cubed, okay? In order to use this formula, what is a cubed going to be? Does everyone see that's a cubed? Okay. Minus 3. What's a squared? Come on, guys. That's a squared. What's b? 6. Plus 3a. What's b squared? 36. Minus, what is b cubed? What is 6 cubed? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do this. You're going to have to wake up to this at some point. Okay. So this becomes m cubed n cubed minus 18 m squared n squared plus 108 mn minus 216. Okay. So that's using the formula a minus b cubed. We saw this formula just a moment ago. So a minus b cubed, which you see, you see right here, a squared minus 3a squared, a cubed minus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared minus b cubed. Now, the other way to work this guy out is just by force. So how would I work this guy out? I would have to come over here and say, let me make this a little bit smaller. So if I did not know that formula, I, this is what I would be doing. How do I do that? Yeah, look at the first two. I get m squared, n squared, and then I'm going to get minus 12 mn plus 36 times mn minus 6. How do I do that? That's where I'm going to make a chart to organize things. So I'm going to have m n minus 6, m squared n squared minus 12 m n and 36. What is m n times m squared n squared? m cubed n cubed. What is mn times minus 12 mn? Yeah. Okay. What is mn times 36? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is negative 6 times m squared n squared? Yeah. What is negative 6 times negative 12 mn? 72 mn. What is negative 6 times 36? 216. So this becomes m cubed n cubed. And what you see happening here is those terms will combine and these terms will combine. So you get what? Minus 18. And then plus 108. And then minus 216. Which of those methods do you prefer? Working it out or the formula? Okay. Yeah, either. You can straight up do it however you want, okay? I'm saying the formula is a little bit of work to memorize, but it's less algebra.
if you can do it. But if you can't memorize a formula, then please, what? Don't use a formula, okay? So if you're going to get the formula wrong, you're better off not to use a formula, okay? So you have choices there. So 2x plus 1 cubed. How do you want me to work that one? With a formula or no formula? How should we do it? No formula, okay? So with no formula, this is 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. What has to happen? Yeah, yeah. So two of these need to be combined. What happens when I do that? I get what? 4x squared plus what? Plus 2x plus 1. Okay? So I get this. So 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. And now what do I do? And this is where I'll come and create myself a chart. What is 2x times 4x squared? Eight x cubed. Two x times four x. Yep. Two x times one. Two x. And then you gotta like it when you have a one. What's one times everything on that row? Yeah, it's just copy down all that stuff. Okay. And like I said, the nice thing about the chart is now you know where to go to look for things that combine. Okay. So what is this final answer going to be? 8x cubed? Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. What is the degree of that polynomial? 3. What's the leading coefficient? 8. Okay. I could have gotten that from here. I know the degree is 3 because I got an x times an x times an x, okay? I know the leading coefficient is 8 because what happens when a 2 and a 2 and a 2 multiply? You're going to get 8. So that is the, uh, the answer for that. Is that the end there? That is it.